So the Dior saddlebag has become a cultural phenomenon. But how exactly did this happen? In today's video, I will be talking about the history of the Dior saddlebag and how it became a cult classic. But before I continue this video, you can follow me on Instagram at Fashion Roadman for everything fashion. So John Galliano's time as the creative director of Dior was full of amazing moments and full of very shameful moments as well. John Galliano is a true mastermind, visionary and couturier that has literally influenced the face of fashion as we see it today and influenced so many current designers that are designing at some of the major houses right now. The issue with John Galliano was never his work. The issue with John Galliano was him himself. And John Galliano's inability to stay out of trouble has been his Achilles heel in his career so far. In John Galliano's third year as the creative director of Dior, he created the Dior saddlebag design in 1999 and debuted the bag in his spring summer 2000 collection. The design was an ode to the equestrian world with the form and silhouette of the bag taking reference from a saddle typically seen on a horse, hence of course the name Saddlebag. It's also been rumoured that John Galliano was inspired to make this bag after he saw a picture by Helmut Newton titled Saddle One in which you see a model crouching on a bed with a saddle on her back. The Spring Summer 2000 collection is also famously known for the many denim looks and the knee-high boots. And around the time that the Dior saddle bag was made by John Galliano, Prada was really getting popular and it was known for this ugly chic, kind of fun but at the same time sassy, at the same time mature aesthetic. And people used to term this kind of Prada look ugly chic because it's quote unquote stereotypically ugly but it makes on look really stylish and chic and the Dior saddlebag kind of came into that total look of being ugly chic so it was just the timing of it as well that was really perfect you have the ugly chic accessory at a time when the most ugly chic brand was at its peak which was Prada the Dior saddlebag was an immediate hit and by the end of 2000 Dior accessory sales were up by 60% as time went on it did not slow down and show any signs of slowing down and this can be attributed to the fact that so many influential celebrities like Paris Hilton were seen wearing the brand as well as Jessica Parker who played Carrie Bradshaw in the cult show Sex and the City. As time progressed, of course this bag was made in many different colours and iterations as big fashion brands and big fashion houses love to do when something is selling well, they beat the horse until it's dead. So what did they do? They beat this horse until it was dead. No pun intended because it's called the saddlebag. But as time went on, because the Dior saddlebags were so oversold and over rinsed and they were just everywhere, and people started to get tired of it. From years like 2004, 2005, 2006, uh, people were buying it less and less and less, and people were less interested. And by 2007, they completely stopped the production of the Dior saddlebags. In 2007 and 2006, around that time, people had focused their attention to different types of bags. And of course, by 2011, Don Galliano had been banished from the house of Dior and he was of course replaced by Raf Simmons. And for a long while, no one really talked about the saddlebag, it wasn't in the forefront, people were focused on other brands. And it wasn't until 2014 when Beyonce was seen wearing a saddlebag that she single-handedly brought back the hype of the saddlebag. And what I can relate this to is Phoebe Philo. I've actually made a video where I talked about how Phoebe Philo brought the Stan Smiths back. And it's kind of the same story where something becomes so hyped and everyone starts wearing it to the point where, as humans, when everyone wears something, then everyone's like, yeah, I don't want to wear that because everyone wears that. And that's kind of what happened with the Stan Smiths. And it kind of died until people like Phoebe Philo started to bring it back. That is very similar to the way after Beyonce wore the saddlebag, it basically had a boom on the secondhand market and all the prices were going up. Everyone was buying saddlebags at the time um, because of the impact of Beyonce. And the hype for the Dior saddlebag had built up so much that the house of Dior just had no choice but to re-release it. And of course, that is definitely what happened. And for the autumn winter, 2018 collection, Maria Grazia Turi actually brought back these bags in her collection. When she brought it back, it was kind of interesting because originally the saddlebag has a very short strap and how it's supposed to be worn is kind of under your armpit. So it was kind of interesting that when Maria Grazia Turi brought the bag back in her autumn winter 2018 collection, she was kind of talking, giving interviews and talking about the comfortability of the bag and it being a really functional bag, which it is. 
Um, but she wanted to kind of push the bag as more of a messenger bag and she was kind of saying that she's going to push longer straps with the bag and in my opinion it doesn't really look nice like that I think it still looks the best when you hold it under your armpit as it was intended to be worn and to read out Maria Grazia's statements what she said and I quote is I thought this collection would be an opportunity to revive its timeless beauty I consider this icon of the house's recent history the perfect accessory to deal with this battle that is daily life. The saddle bag is a bag that is worn in exactly the same way as a shirt or jacket and it's so comfortable to wear with its long strap that you almost forget it's there. The saddle bag is also practical because it allows you to carry everything you need with you. It's for this reason that I wanted it larger and more robust but also very colourful, embroidered or with beaded fringe because like a chameleon, it adapts to all situations. And this was quite interesting because of course, for some of the saddlebags, she did slightly increase the size. Of course, like I said, she was pushing kind of people to buy these longer straps that you can attach to the saddlebag and make it sort of a messenger bag, which I didn't like aesthetically. I get the comfort side of it and that you can, of course, it's, it's easier than just holding and clutching something over your armpit but if we're talking about how aesthetically pleasing it looks it doesn't look that aesthetically pleasing in my personal opinion i think maria grazia bringing this bag back was also very timely considering that this collection was heavily inspired by the 1968 parisian protest and the year that she made this collection was the 50th anniversary so i mean if you're going to pay homage to such a big event that happened in parisian history it has to come with a big bang and the big bang was of course bringing back the Dior saddlebag. It's important to note though that during this whole time the Dior saddlebag was still marketed towards women and there wasn't really a market for saddlebags when it came to men and this was quite interesting because Kim Jones debut collection as the artistic director for menswear at Dior um, so this was his spring summer 2019 collection he actually made these saddlebags in many different ways that he thought um, were more masculine and that were more suitable for a man to wear. It was quite relevant to the times because when Kim Jones became the artistic director for men, it kind of signified a new era for Dior menswear. And Kim Jones was of course receiving the baton and taking over the menswear um, from Chris Van Ash. And the collection did seem to question what men should and shouldn't wear in terms of accessories because men, and when it comes to bags and accessories in general, we are very limited with what we wear. And I like how he reinterpreted a historically woman's bag, uh, making crossbody versions. He had these tiny little pouches that you could attach to your belt or your belt loops. And then he also had mini saddle bags that were attached to backpacks. Um, which were quite interesting because it's not something we've seen before. This collection was also in collaboration with Matthew Williams of Elix. So on the buckles of these saddlebags and all the iterations, there were kind of like the roller coaster belt design that is very reminiscent of what we see at Elix Studios. In the present day, to me, the saddlebag is still going strong and a lot of the saddlebags are still selling well. And that means that the spirit well, John Galliano at Dior still lives on. But on that note, tell me what you guys like about the Dior saddlebag. Like this video, subscribe to my channel if you're new. And of course, if you want to support the channel financially, I do have a Patreon and I am posting a lot of exclusive content there. And for just $3 a month, you can obviously donate more if you want to. Um, but for $3 a month, you get access to all this content. But yeah, thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for more videos in the future. So the Dior saddlebag has So the Dior saddlebag has become a cultural phenomenon. Quote unquote stereotypically ugly, but it makes someone look really stylish and chic. And the Dior saddlebag kind of came into that total look of being ugly chic. So it was just the timing of it as well that was really perfect. That was really perfect. You have the ugly chic accessory.